spike of volume right as the price declines, which has left many feeling that the CFTC is basically doing this style of regulation where just a quick check and then bring your missiles on in. Although as promised, there is a step rather than being frustrated and upset about this that you can take Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Mark is here with you for Arcadia Economics. Today with a video I feel is rather important simply because so many people ask me this question. All right, we get it, the CFTC. Seems to be on the take from a regulatory perspective. They have their policies voted on by the banks that repeatedly break the law and seemingly never get penalized outside of a small cost of doing business before they go back and do the same thing again. And people say, is the manipulation ever gonna end? Is there anything that can be done? Well, as a matter of fact, there is, which is exactly what we will dig into today because the CFTC, like any other group, does have an oversight committee. And even if that oversight committee doesn't do something, they've got an oversight committee too. And shockingly enough, at least if a lot of people try and contact, that I would say substantially increases your odds better than just being frustrated that nothing happens. And gee, if there was ever a productive way to channel that energy, okay, fine, I get it. When the price came down from 25.50 down to below 24.80, it may not have been fun, especially when you see this frequent pattern with large spike of volume right as the price declines, which has left many feeling that the CFTC is basically doing this style of regulation where just a quick check and then bring your missiles on in. Although, as promised, there is a step rather than being frustrated and upset about this that you can take. Real quick, before we get to that, I would like to just mention briefly that today's video is brought to you by BlackRock Silver, which recently tripled its land position at Tonopah West. And we'll be digging into them a little bit more with Dave Kranzler later this week. So especially if you're looking for potential leverage on a silver move, when the tamp downs from the CFTC are finally ceased, uh, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and we'll dig back in a bit more to that one. But anyway, if you're tired of this, I mean, maybe you've heard this clip from Bart Shulton, former CFTC commissioner, who before he passed away, I asked him just because wanted to make sure what I was asserting was correct before writing books and doing shows about it. So let's take a listen to what former Commissioner Bart Chilton said about silver manipulation. Again, I appreciate you mentioning the spoofing. Curious, uh, because uh, my understanding of what, how some of the manipulation has occurred is that, you know, if silver is trading $20.05, there's a lot of stop orders placed around the $20 handle. So Often, if the price can get pushed a little bit, then you get a lot of those high frequency algorithms kicking in, and then you'll see a drop with many feeling that people kind of nudging a little are then able to buy lower. Does that right. sound like a reasonably accurate portrayal to put it in perspective to folks, or would you phrase it differently? Well, it's a, it's a, good, portray it's a good portrayal, but it's actually, it's a very good portrayal. Now, he talks about the details, which you're welcome to listen to. And then about three minutes later, he sums it up by saying. So uh, the difference in your description is that today, when a market moves because of a spoof, mm. it can move a lot more. Well, there you go, which would match exactly what we saw here. Um, as you see, heavy volume, smash down. The CFTC has the records and could tell you if the same banks that were shorting up here or government institutions that intervene in currency markets, uh, like the plunge protection team on working markets or the exchange stabilization fund were on both sides of these trades. Obviously, the CFTC could look that up. Although the unfortunate part is that rather than checking those trading records, instead, what has the CFTC been doing? And in many respects, um, the resiliency and the market structure of uh, the futures market really were able to tamp down um, what could have been a much worse situation in the silver market. Of course, they did that by controlling the price and the volatility, which this is current acting commissioner, Rostin Benham. And I get it. People have sent letters to the office. They've called. 
you look at the guy's Twitter feed, he's not very popular and there are not many people who think that he has any intention of honestly doing his job, which can be frustrating, but rather than losing your cool, what if you knew that the House Agriculture Committee had recently appointed Emily German will take on the role of subcommittee staff director uh, on commodity exchanges. And the reason that that would be of significance is that if you call the Agricultural Committee, which you can do yourself, I've already done that to help make it a little easier, but 202-225-2171 and say, hey, we have irrefutable evidence, even from the CFTC commissioners themselves, that they're part of a price fixing operation. What can be done about that? Well, it turns out Emily G is your girl. Um, now, it was interesting when I was searching for the committee and Emily to see if there's any more information to find out. I say this respectfully, she looks a little younger than the average JP Morgan or Goldman Sachs executive. Another page that showed up says she is 30 years old, which does not necessarily mean anything, except I know some of these things are easier to spot and perhaps do something about as I have a little bit more time and experience. But in either case, hey, I didn't set up the system, but that is the subcommittee staff director at the US House of Representatives now, if you go into the description field in here below, you can see this link for Arcadia Economics. And this is the evidence files, as well as Emily's email address, emily.german at mail.house.gov. Again, that is emily.german at mail.house.gov. You could send her the letter that I wrote to Representative Maxine Waters, which you could download there. Here are the... Uh, numbers for Maxine, who heads the House Committee on Financial Services. Of course, there is the letter that I sent to Rostin Benham, which laid out the evidence clear as day, as well as questions like, has the silver price been tamped down on other occasions, such as end of April 2011? Other times, we already know um, from the extensive literature out there covering what happened in 1980, that the CFTC and the COMEX went very far out of their way to tamp down the price then as well. And of course, if you'd like to send Emily the rounds of evidence that I sent to the CFTC's TPS report whistleblower program on February 12th, April 6th, and uh, later on that letter as well, you can download all of that here, write a short note to Emily. I'm sure she gets a lot of mail, but say something to the effect of, look, there's irrefutable evidence that the silver market has been manipulated. It dropped 10% on February 2nd, which was the greatest single day of silver demand in history, according to not only the bank's own data, but multiple silver bullion dealers who actually sell physical silver, not the paper stuff. The CFTC refuses to respond to the evidence. They refuse to respond to the questions posed by Acting Commissioner Benham talking about a price fixing operation. And as the Oversight Committee, Emily, will you look into this? What are you aware of? What can you tell people? Before we wrap up, one last final note. I did hear from someone else on another oversight committee, so I'll report back on that. Uh, that's the inspector general, but at least when you call agricultural committees, they confirm that they have oversight of the CFTC as well. And again, I certainly get it. The days we look, we see 5% inflation prints and silver gets pummeled. It's rigged. And I've been there too, and that's the challenge not to sit there and let that be how the rest of your day goes, but rather than doing that, emily.german at mail.house.gov, this is the woman who took the position and said that she's gonna monitor it according to that agency. So I would suggest if you really wanna see this come to an end, send Emily a letter, send Maxine Waters a letter, contact local officials. I was really blown away by the effort everybody participated in when we did this a few months ago. And just remember every person you contact, the evidence is mounting, more people are going out of their way to ignore it and just do what you can. Don't worry about solving it. But if you throw a thousand darts at the board and one of us hits, I think that's certainly a lot more fun than just being frustrated and feeling powerless. So in the description field below is the link to this page. Go contact Emily, tell her that you're an honest citizen. You'd like to see integrity in our markets and you've heard that she's the person to talk to, what is being done, what can we do, and feel free to report back as you hear anything. And with that said, I will see you again soon.